Hey everybody. We have time for people to arrive. Yes. This is a live, Laura and Simon live, on this very interesting topic of self love, self pleasure, physical self pleasure. So we're just going to wait to see if there's some people joining us live. If there's not, then we will start rolling if you've joined us then our plan is to roll for about 30 minutes or so if you have any questions you can put them in the comments below and it's nice if uh, yeah if the interaction builds up sometimes in the comment thread it's really awesome because other people connect and the dialogue begins and this is a, a dialogue that we feel is really important around masturbation around our genitals around sexuality it's a big topic and many of us know, many of you know watching this, listening, that uh, sex itself, but you know, just, it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's still a big taboo in, our, in, a, in the 21st century. A lot of people still don't want to talk about their sexuality. There's a lot of uh, deep rooted shame, guilt, uh, judgment and all that. So it's massive really. I mean, we, we, the even the word masturbation we can just start from there because masturbation the word comes from latin manu stuprare and that means translated something like fornication with your hand so it has a really dirty negative connotation to it and the fact that this is still impacting us to this day um, was reason enough for us to really explore into this deeper and deeper and realize how much power and yeah, how much power we have hidden inside of our genitals and how that is almost, um, yeah, how that is in a way made by, suppressed by society because if we really deeply connect to our, our, the power that we have in our genitals, we would be so much more free, so much more liberated and so much more self-thinking human beings. And um, so tackling this issue Masturbation, self-love, on the physical level, is um, it's been really powerful for us. Mm. Yeah, and some of you have been maybe listening to what we've been sharing over the last four or five years and the the naked retreats that we've been on. Or we, today, we really just want to show up and share a little bit about our own story with masturbation, with sexuality, we come from that point, and also for people listening. It might seem like in today's day and age when you look out there in the world and there's so much, uh, so many uh, um, challenges happening and so many big talks of crises and you know where the climate change and all these other big seeming problems that are going to cause so much havoc for humanity, whether it be artificial intelligence or you know whatever, you know all this uh, governmental dramas and so on. Like literally, and this might sound quite far out, literally, if we all started going deeper into the root of the suppression around our sexuality and where that really stems from, we go deep into like why religion started to suppress and create as a sin, yeah? And you start to look at the suppression out in our species in terms of our vital force, a life force, how that's been suppressed, how that's been sucked out of us. We see humans walking around like, like living dead. We start to look at that and, and regenerate through our genitals, through the awareness and educate our, our youth into mindful, medita uh, mindful masturbation and, and exploration and understanding around the genitals and the body as a whole. If we just go back there, the origin of where we came from, we can actually really make huge change in the world. So, so really, it, it, often we want to get to the root, but we go outward trying to get everybody else to solve our problems. But actually, if we if we go if we go inside, we can actually make a much more um, more powerful uh, change. Yeah, much more powerful transformation on the outer. And so maybe that's a nice place to just start and say, if you want to share a little bit about your story mm. around masturbation and why you feel now. Uh, it's helped you change as a as a as a being. Yeah. And one one quick disclaimer: this conversation is for all gender. 
you know, from the understanding of man and woman and everything in between. It's not just about you have to be in a relationship. It's not about, it's, it literally is inclusive of everybody. This self-love is, is about universal love, unconditional love. So I just wanted to just make that it's a, 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 as a, a clarity for everybody listening. Yeah, so my journey of masturbation is a very, started very early. Literally, I started masturbating and discovering my yoni or my vagina uh, before the age of one, before I could even speak the word mama. I knew how to get to an orgasm. And I, had, I was fortunate enough to have parents who really, really enjoyed, even overtly enjoyed the fact that I was masturbating. So my mom was very happy because she's a very liberated, free spirit. And she was like, yes, my daughter is masturbating. <laughs> And uh, she was really kind of encouraging me and not suppressing it at all. So I, I grew up in a way very free with this sexuality of mine. So it was mostly around clitoral stimulation. I had my little soft toys and over the years they would lose their shape because I would lie on my belly and, you know, the, have them between my legs and just move them and, and get to these beautiful feelings and they often I often used it to fall asleep at night so a little quick release to just like ah, fall asleep and be in a really beautiful space with that still although I had all these really free experiences and my parents really allowed me to do it and nobody uh, I mean in, in kindergarten there were my mom had to tell me Dara you have to be careful in kindergarten people don't understand it the way I do so there was this talk and I, I did understand that something about this wasn't really accepted in society but although I grew up with so much freedom around it I still felt the suppression of society and I still developed a lot of guilt and shame to the effect that when I actually started sexually engaging with men uh, around the age of 15 I wasn't able to share my orgasm although I can come or I could come still can come within seconds and can make myself orgasm within a very short time uh, I wasn't able to share this orgasmic experience with men because I had wired into my system so strongly that this is mine and I'm not going to share it with anybody. So uh, it took me quite a while to get over this and to start realizing that I, I can share this and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I don't need to find a man who can do this to me, but it is me who has to be open to sharing this experience. Still, my self-pleasure practice in a way was very one-dimensional. And this is something that I realize when I work with women a lot. Most women have a very one-dimensional self-love, self-pleasure practice. So it's, with me, it was no movement, no sound and no breath because I wanted to hide the fact that I was self-pleasuring. And so I would develop this technique where I almost move nothing, hold my breath and don't do any sound. And then orgasm comes. <laughs> so that program I've been working on for a couple of years now to break because one of the one of the or the three pillars of orgasmic yoga, a, a practice that we do now in order to really take take charge of our own orgasmic energy, in, uh, has three uh, yeah has three pillars, and they are sound, movement, and breath. So all the things <laughs> that I haven't been doing. And it's been a really beautiful practice to learn to break these patterns and, and realize how much more orgasmic energy I can have inside my body through sounding, through moving, and through breathing. Yeah, and maybe do you want to also share just around how, yeah, as you got older, and do you want to share a little bit about your masturbate? How did your masturbation um, practice or technique move into older older life and and with relationship and older so on life. older life yeah <laughs> did you continue did you continue masturbating was there shame was there was was there was you hiding did you just masturbate freely with uh, as you started to get older what happened i i actually my must like i started masturbating less in the sense of being so reliant on it as a quick release at times um, I also started to, to, to practice my or to like really incorporate different ways so not just the clitoral but the more internal stimulation and that felt really beautiful but in the beginning I was numb literally my vagina inside I didn't feel anything I was so unused to experiencing pleasure inside 
that I, I needed to literally resensitize my inside and that was a journey that keeps continuing and I really, really, really love it. Really love to explore the depth of what I can, uh, what pleasure I can hold inside of my body. So that's a very, um, yeah, it's a very beneficial journey. And yes, nowadays I don't really have any shame around it anymore. We do self-pleasure um, ritual. I, we do it, I do it with Simon at times and it's a wonderful practice. So the shame around it has left me very much so and has freed my whole system and given so much more joy and pleasure to my whole life. Like I feel now, I feel orgasmic walking through my days. I feel orgasmic. Um, without even having to touch myself in any way because I'm finally taking care of of my own orgasmic energy which is just life force it's just the, the, the one thing that keeps um, keeps nurturing us from the inside apart from food and air and all of that this, this, when we start to play with this energy we really become what we call orgasmonauts so explorers of pleasure and bliss in life not just in the bedroom. Yeah, so, yeah, what do I want to say about uh, masturbation? So, yeah, feel free to share in the comments if there's any points you want to share yourself or any vulnerability you, you, you feel like sharing. Um, we're currently doing a orgasmic yoga um, experiment you could say where we're taking it at the moment we have about 45 people joining us in uh, on a journey of 21 days to self-pleasure every day so I guess what I want to share with you all is that over the last uh, 10 years 2007 let's say from 2007 onwards um, you know around the sort of eight eight to ten years you, I've been on this journey of like self-love right what's what is what does love mean what does truth mean and gone on, went on that deep inquiry into who am i what am i what who you know how do i influence life and and in order to do that you start to look at your behaviors and you look at your actions and you look at your past conditioning and you look at your your upbringing and you look at you know your belief systems and you you check in with why do you believe certain things and how do you perceive things and how do people perceive you and you start to really look at the whole fabric of your being and so really self-love as I've been speaking about it for many many years is about loving the whole self loving the being the physical being yeah this uh, every aspect of you and and then how do you from that place go out into the world and tap into a universal love a love for all beings, a love for other human beings, but a love for all sentient beings, all beings. And that in itself is a huge journey into judgment and uh, you know, your blame and punishment and shame and guilt and all of this, these, are, uh, these um, beliefs that we have of, of why we can't love ourselves, yeah? of, of uh, you know, why we can't just love life as it is. And so I guess recently studying sexological bodywork and, and taking that deeper and also through the naked the retreats that we've been doing for the last uh, four years we dive deeper into sexuality and we've looked at all of our um, let's say our erotic we're now looking at our core erotic theme which is like looking at our sexual experiences from a young age so if I just take you back to some of mine for example I lost my virginity by paying for sex, paying for what would be called a prostitute. I don't like calling them prostitutes, but um, that's you know in the field. And growing up in, in in an environment with older men, and growing up in an environment where men are quite misogynistic towards women, and where women from a you know a cis man that I was, the generalization of a of a man, society's man that looks for a woman and wants to have sex, yeah, and so. Masturbation, wanking, the term wanking or you're a wanker was something that a lot of men used to term. So if, if they caught you or knew that you was wanking, they'd call you, you wanker, you're a wanker, you can't get a woman, you got to go, I'm a wank, go and play with yourself. It was like a, a completely um, a negative thing to do. And it also uh, 
would come across as if like, well, if you're wanking, you can't get a woman. And if you can't get a woman, then you're obviously ugly or unworthy or not good, not a macho man in the world that I was in. So there was, it was all about um, how many women you can fuck. Yeah, that's really what it was about. Yeah, how many, and who you fucked, who you've been with, eh, how many women you've been with, you know, this is some of the talk. And many of the, 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 the generalized men that I grew up with, you know, look at, uh, look at porn or had watched porn and maybe looked at the, you know, naked women in the newspaper or, or magazines and so on. And although I didn't get deep into pornography and I didn't get deep into porno magazines, it was definitely in the field. And, and, I, and I did watch a few pornos a few times, even sometimes with a group of men. I remember one time I watched the porno with a group of men and, uh, and just feeling those sensations of being in a room with a group of men and feeling turned on and horny, but not, you know, not touching anything. Um, and then also there was a time when I remember there was a group of men in, a, in a, the woods. The woods is like a little forest you know, wood near where we lived. And there was a group of men that used to go down into the woods and actually wank and, and have like this sort of like uh, wank session, right? And it was like, and there was talk around the estate of like how, you know, nasty that was and, and weird. And then there was this weird guy that was caught like a, what was termed at the time like a paedophile or somebody, some man in the woods that was caught every now and again sniffing gas and wanking, right? So that went around, that went around the school. Yeah, that went around the school. Um, and all the kids were like, you know, scared to go through the woods on the way home and walk home because there might be this so-called horrible man wanking and, and watching and, and watching you and stuff. So like there was all this, the real negative energy around masturbation. Um, even I tell you another story. There was one guy that was caught um, wanking with butter. He had like a lard, you know, like cooking butter, and put his mum's tights on and was found wanking. And that went round the school, and it was like, oh man, you know, like freak guy. And actually, sounds quite interesting. Might put your mum's tights on and and play play with some, you know, why not oil or lubricant? But he was using butter. I mean, as you, as you get older and wiser and you look at it, it's like, was it really a bad thing? He was exploring himself and maybe it felt quite nice. So you see how... But it's good to say that the reason why we have fetishes, yeah, this is a kind of fetish that is probably developed itself in that time, is because there is an emotion that from childhood wants to experience itself and doesn't really know how else to do because our sexuality really, and that's the most interesting thing when we talk about core erotic theme, our sexuality is literally set up for you to experience that feeling which you missed out on or which kind of injured you in some way when you were young, to experience that again and heal it. Nice. So sexuality is such a beautiful way because it really is made for us to heal. The problem is most of us get stuck in the feeling rather than moving through it and and seeing it as an opportunity mm. for healing sexuality and they have some sort of idea of what healthy sexuality should look like and they try to get there um, but they're not allowing themselves to actually feel these deep feelings of for in my case for example I've, I've had an experience where I was I was very young and I was in a whirlpool a public whirlpool and there were uh, lots of people in the pool and there was no space for me to sit so I went in the middle and everything was bubbling the water was there and all of a sudden I had a hand we were all naked because it was in a sauna uh, I had a hand between my legs and I knew something wasn't right so I felt shame but I also felt sexual feelings and this these two feelings mixed themselves together and mm. kind of created a, co a part of my core erotic theme which then all of a sudden I needed I've, I realized that shame has been a big f theme in my sexual experiences with men. So I would recreate and try to recreate this feeling of being ashamed of my own sexuality uh, or what I'm doing or something a bit secretive or it's, it's a right. little bit wrong. So right. I kept repeating this pattern because perhaps something inside of me um, had wired shame with uh, erotic or arousal. So again, it's really important for us to understand these things around our sexuality so we can move closer and closer to a healthy sexuality by healing those aspects inside of ourselves that create uh, distortion and that kind of run us into being with partners that are destructive to us or keep repeating these patterns that are not really healthy. Yeah, so just going back to like telling you a little bit more of um, 
the journey. So based on what I've just shared about masturbation, that build up, you can imagine that I went into my youth, it's like I wasn't, I wasn't masturbating. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna play with myself. The very, I don't even remember when I first started masturbating and I don't remember, all I remember it being when I did, it was a real, you know, get a bit of tissue or, or um, you know, put it on the side and then do it and then, you know, put it away. And it was always this sort of dirty experience. And from a, because I didn't want to masturbate because of all this energy around masturbation being bad, I, I was having wet dreams for, um, wet dreams for the first part of my, so I'm, I can't remember, maybe 14, 15, 16, 17 still, even 18, I was having wet dreams. And then I had premature ejaculation. So I was having like, when I was meeting women and getting excited and started to go into it, I was going through this process of where I would, I would ejaculate sometimes just through kissing, just through kissing another woman and being excited. And I'd be like, oh, you know, it's, oh, it's over. And having, yeah, and having these like um, freak, um, um, having these freak experiences. And I say freak, meaning like, you know, they were, they were vulnerable. They were, they were making me sometimes feel like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not a man or I can't pleasure a woman well and, and so on. So I went through this whole um, journey with, with that where, you know, then I started to hear that, oh, well, some men masturbate and play with themselves and they, you know, they do that and it helps them during lovemaking. But still, there was this stigma around masturbation. So I just thought, right, I need to, I need to have more women. So I went on this whole thing of like, I was always, my, one of my core erotic themes is about older women and danger and, and it was also about how, you know, get, have more sex, like go out there and seek more sex, sleep with more women and you become a better lover. And I could talk to you about a whole story around that and seeking to sleep with a hundred women or more as a, as a game that I had with a, a friend and then sleeping with over 60, well, I don't even, I lost count now. I think I say sometimes 45 to 55 paid, paid for sex during that time of, um, you know, my youth between 16 and I think about 20, it was about 21, and just giving you numbers. So that was like, when you start to look at your own sexual, um, what, how we call that, environment and behavior, you start to really start to look deeper into the, the feelings and the emotions that you start to build up and also that you trap away. So what we want to talk about really today or in the closing of this live, is that now at 41 years old and in the last six months, and through the sexological bodywork training and through the journey with Dara anyway and having a much more conscious and healthy uh, communication around sexuality and around uh, being able to express ourselves. I've now seen how through self-love and including the, uh, the genitals as what I call the genital generators and how to use them as pleasure activators as a way of building up energy, life force energy. I've realized that throughout the years where I've had so much energy and often people say, why you got so much energy? It's because I've been actually full of life force. And then now it's like, oh, how do you actually cultivate that energy? How do you, how do you use that to manifest, to create, to, to, um, to heal yourself, to release uh, past trauma and past pain and, and to really, um, yeah, make change in yourself and into the world is that actually you start to incorporate this self pleasure. And this is, and if I, and this is why I love sharing this now, because we're talking about this goes out to all of you people out there who are single sometimes and you think that you're unworthy and you can't love yourself or you need a partner to love yourself or you need two partners to love yourself or you need experiences or three or four or five or 10 or you need to go and get on porn or you need, a, you need to go and get some outside stimulation. I, we are here to tell you that is just not the case. And when you start to bring in a mindful meditation uh, practice, when you try to bring in a conscious self-loving meditation self-pleasuring, self-loving meditation into your day-to-day -day life through touching yourself, not just your genitals, but inclusion of the genitals and your whole body. And you start to explore that with curiosity and clear intention. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. So that's how we start to tap in to the orgasmic self. We start to tap in to the real life force generators that we are. And then we can start to use that with breath, movement, sound. And from doing, we move into being. Mm. 
Mm. And there's this beautiful journey that can take place, which then once you cultivate with yourself, you can share with another or others or whatever, whatever your your um, you know your desires are. But it it starts to it starts to bring a healthy, uh, let's say, coherent balance to the integration of your sexuality. It's no longer a taboo. It's no longer something you just do in the sly or hide away or sh through shame and guilt. It's no longer something that you, you hide from. So that's really what orgasmic yoga is about. And you know we're gonna be sharing a lot more about that over the coming, um, the coming year because we are pleasure activists on a mission <laughs> to raise the frequency of ourselves and the planet through pleasure, something that we've suppressed for thousands of years. So we really want to move this taboo of masturbation, this dark, dirty topic that we all cringe when we even talk about it, into a light field where it is just a physical expression of what everybody at the moment talks about, self-love. So why should it not include our body? Why should it not include the very part of your body that created you or you know, we all come from the interaction of penis and vagina inside of them each other that's just a fact it's just the truth and the fact that we're con still suppressing it the fact that still on social media we can show violence bloodshed all of this can go viral but sexuality or even the showing of a nipple is suppressed just tells us so much about the acceptance of us as human fleshy natural beings that are, we can't show we can't share show our kids that we're naked all of this is still yeah. going on so much can't show our kids we're naked just a quick can I just share a quick story that happened in Greece very quickly about the, yes. the, the, the guy so we're, we're naked on a beach in Greece where you're not it's not a nude beach but I was naked because I didn't have my swimming shorts so I I mean I often swim naked anyway but I went into the sea and this man was arriving with his child and he had obviously seen that I was maybe in the sea or I'd, oh no I'd come out so he'd seen that I was naked and he came down the beach and he was shouting like put put it away put cover yourself he was like really angry and I was like at first I was shocked because I had a towel I had a towel over me and I was sat with my friend and he was naked but we were pretty covered you couldn't see anything <clears throat> so I stood up I put the towel around me I said hey what you know what's the problem it's no problem yeah I can cover up but what's the problem he goes I do not want my kid seeing your cock right and I was like I was shocked and, and I was like, well, that's okay. I've covered it now. I said, like, but like, you're really angry. Do you want, and you know, I'm always here. I'm wanting to transmute everything to love and I'm wanting to hear him. I want to have empathy. So I was trying to breathe and I asked him if he'd breathe, if he'd take his sunglasses off and just relax. It's okay. We're happy to put our pants on. And he was like, no, I can get the police down here in a few seconds. This is not a new beach. I do not want my kid seeing your cock. Put it away. And I was like, wow. This was intense. And then I, I sat with that after. He even started shouting at us because he thought other people in the sea were naked. They were not even with us. This happened just like a few months ago, right? And I was like, wow, isn't that, isn't that so interesting that his son has a cock, he has a cock, and his son was born from the beautiful journey of a cock. Yet he does not want his son, or him in that case, maybe he's been traumatized. Of course, there's so many stories it could be that he's had. But isn't it interesting that the violence, the anger, the, the rage that was coming through this being, right, just because of a genital. Mm -hmm. Now, there was something we really need to look at, people. Like, and, and I know many of you watching this, you might have this. You've got this inbuilt conditioning just like us, where, you know, we go down to the beach and little kids joke at our daughter, my stepdaughter and Dara's daughter, joke like because she's naked and they make little jokes, right? Because they're so conditioned about um, nudity, yeah? You, you know, you, you walk around in this society and people don't want to talk about sex. You even, you even at the beach, I don't do this anymore. And if you do this, check this out, I don't do this anymore. That stupid move that you do with a towel down at the beach that makes you feel like a plonker more than even showing yourself and you put that stupid towel on and you move around and you're like oh yeah pass my shorts and you put it and you don't want to show anything let alone somebody sees a bit of skin of your buttock you know oh my god and you're like oh yeah and you cover it up i'm done with that 
I do not cover myself up when I put my shorts on. Towel comes off, shorts go on. Somebody sees something, I'm sorry, but you saw a piece of flesh for two seconds, you know? It's it, insane. And it's a really good example for the body shaming that is going on in our cultures everywhere around the planet and specifically with social media at the moment, pushing that even further, I feel. Like there's, there's an, a real big non-acceptance around our fleshy human bodies because it is very deeply linked to sexuality and sexuality is very suppressed. So because we're suppressing our sexuality, we're suppressing our very, our bodies that have nothing to do just with sex in general. They're just bodies, skin with vaginas and penises and nipples and all of this. So our mission really is to, to bring more balance to this, to to liberate our sexuality and to liberate our, our mm. bodies from the suppression of thousands of years of conditioning. Mm. Yeah, and, and maybe that's a lovely thing. Maybe we sort of have to end. If you have any questions, you want to pop them in there, we've probably gone over the half hour because we, could, we will be and can talk about this topic immensely. But like, you know, for example, Dara did a post one time and, you know, showed a bit of nipple and it was like we got banned or something because there was a bit of nipple. And yet there's men out there, bless you men, if you've got man boobs, they're called, I think. You know, if you've got them, you've got them. But you guys can walk around with your man boobs and, you know, women can't walk around with their boobs out. I mean, that's a little bit crazy, don't you think? Um, and then the other thing is, is that if we write the word orgasm or masturbation or what's the other word? Um, I don't know, naked. boob, naked, can't do any, not that we massively do much boosting, but you can't do any boosting on social media, you can't write it, and the words, the sex, you know, you, you, you write sex, it's still, I mean, come on, and I know, listen, many of you might be listening to this and go, yeah, it's not just one-sided, and maybe you're religious as well, and you're like, no, you shouldn't show yourself, we, we, we're open to all parts. We understand a friend of ours recently who her father is a, um, a nudist. You know, sometimes it doesn't feel right for him to be nude in certain scenarios. I'm not telling you all to just go out and be naked and start running around, although that would be quite cool. Um, but what I am saying is let's look at our own conditioning around our own body, around our own uh, nakedness. And who's, whose beliefs are we using? Like, whose, whose beliefs are we really believing that it's not okay for us to be naked now and again, wherever we want to be naked, especially in our own home, especially in, in an environment that feels safe for us. Or in nature. Or in nature. So it's so natural. Or down, down at certain, certain beaches. And then let's look at the, let's ask the reason why the place where we were born, the, the, the life-giving force, the energy, the pure power of our genitals, why has it been suppressed for thousands of years? If that is the elixir of life, the power, the, the creative force that drives through all of us, why? Why? What comes up for you when I ask this question? Why has it been suppressed? Is there some treasure in us finding out that answer? I mean, at the same time, we're using it everywhere. We're getting so many mixed messages. Sex sells everything on this planet. Um, the, the, from the cars, from the symbols of the cars that look like lingams and yonis, vaginas and penises, to to ads and yeah. and bikini models and everything sells through magazines. Sex. But on the other hand, we get this uh, this this message of like sex is not good and yeah. you shouldn't really do it and don't talk about it and it's so on and all so sex. forth. So this this confusion that we're having really impacts our personal sexuality impacts the way we touch ourselves impacts the way we show up then with our partners and our children and our children and and just to say like for me I, I the whole is all one big orgasm <laughs> it's all one big ejaculation the whole of life is one big ejaculation but we're okay to create ourselves we're okay to touch this part of the body this is acceptable but lo and behold we see a buttock a naked buttock or, or, or a testicle or, or, or a lingam or a penis or a cock or whatever term you call it or, or, or a vagina or you know a pussy or a, a, li a yoni whatever term off, no. yeah, yeah whatever term you call it lo and behold we see that and we do understand that these are beautiful parts of the body yeah but it's like we want to bring some new conversations around this and if it's if life force is coming through us 
and everyone, why does everyone love drama and gossip when it comes about sex and sexuality and all these hidden things? Why is, why is all this area really attractive? Because it's like, it's taboo and it's unknown and so on, yeah? But people start going out there because they feel naughty. Why is that? Because at the core, everybody oh wants it. Everybody wants to be uh, sexed up. Everybody wants to get deep connection and, and have real contact. Everybody's craving for it. But instead of finding that and being able to communicate that, we end up creating loads of teapots, you know, <laughs> or creating loads of things and like expressing ourselves through loads of mad things that we sell and it becomes consumerism and so on. We buy more sofas and buy more clothes every month and go and buy all this crap to somehow fulfill us when at the core we have our hands, we have our bodies, and we have our genitals. And it's, it's all happening mm. here. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like the sound of this and you want to dive deeper, you could, this is not like a, a big marketing uh, thing, but we're gonna be doing a regular 21 days orgasmic yoga where we guide you, support you. We, we have a group of, um, a closed group where we can connect, share, we can uncover our inhibitions, uncover our distractions, our limitations, and we can start to uncover the deep-rooted suppression that's blocking us from being true orgasmonauts, pleasure activists, that walk around as ecstatic, vibrating, pulsating, electromagnetic, creative beings. Whoa, that turns me on. Are you in? If you're in, write in the comments that you are in. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna plug in, it's like a plug, right? We plug in all the time to everything nowadays. Plug into the Wi-Fi, plug into the electricity. Let's plug into our own power, which is in our pants. It's been hidden there all along, and it's time to bring that love, that self-love into that field. Who's in? Are you in, people? I'm definitely in. <laughs> what we're doing on this orgasmic yoga journey really is to change our patterns and bring a huge variety of things that we can do with ourselves and our bodies and and really mix things up because we're all so one-dimensional we want to expand it into this big world yeah miguel you're in very good <laughs> yes boom Be one in. one one uh, uh, divine beings in on the pleasure activism and i love the, I love the name menage à moi. I just need to say it again. Yeah. So you rather than masturbating, that. let's have a menage à moi with ourselves. Let's just create the journey that we want. That let's, let's touch ourselves the way we always wanted to be touched mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. haven't been able to communicate. Let's learn how we even want to be touched. Exactly. Because often we expect our partners to, to touch us in a way, but we don't even know what we want. And then how can they know? So only if we know ourselves, mm -hmm. they will be able to then uh, love us. Yeah. Love us the way we want to be loved. I want you to finish. You didn't really, you sort of, because you love menage a moi, you went off, you was telling something about the orgasmic yoga. So we, it mixes with everything, beautiful people. We start to incorporate dance and movement and, um, sound. and sound and we start to do different moves and we start to build up high energy in ourselves and we start to listen to music and we do all the beautiful things. We do all the beautiful things that we often go out and do, whether it be yoga, whether it be um, um, qigong, tai chi, all of these things. And we just start to bring the intention into that um, uh, orgasmic area, into that life force genital space. And we incorporate the genitals into our practices. And this, my friends, is where the sprinkle comes on top of the cake. Because now we start to go, wow, yeah, I can explore my whole being as a genital, right? I can explore this whole body. And, it, and it, sometimes, for example, it might be that you sit in meditation and you just focus on your genitals and you focus on your body and you just sit in silence and you just focus and you bring cultivate energy through breath alone. It might be that you just do movement and you cultivate orgasm, men, you're gonna love this, or anybody really, men and women, orgasms, full body orgasms without even touching the genitals. Have you contemplated that? I've had them, it's phenomenal, it's beautiful, it's life force moving through your whole body, you feel amazing, you feel electric, you feel alive, and you haven't even touched your genitals. So, you know, we're, we're exploring something that no longer needs to be a taboo, yeah? This is really what the orgasmic yoga experience is. And as Dara said before, yoga just means a practice, a daily practice. Doesn't mean you have to do downward dog, but hey, downward dog whilst playing with your genitals, 
It's a whole new experience. <laughs> um, you just said something that, um, lovely that, that sparked me off on a whole another... Anyway, <laughs> it, 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 might, it might come back. If you've got any questions, I'm into and sharing this with older women. Fiona, Ooh, yes. Fiona Winter, beautiful to hear that. Um, you know, there's... Oh. Go on, you want to say something? Because I was going to close, but you can. Yes. No, go. No, I, wasn't, I was going. I was just going to say, if you're interested in this journey that we're that we're bringing to you, it's a 21 day process that starts in a week. So on the 6th of November, we're starting for 21 days. We're going to just bring it together this group of people that really hold each other accountable. And for every single day for 21 days, we're going to give each other or give to ourselves 30 minutes, 30 minutes of self pleasure and really rewire a new habit, rewire a new experience around masturbation and around the menage a moi into our system. So head over to darrensimon.com and, and search for Orgasmic Yoga. It's an upcoming event. You, you might have seen it on our page anyway. And we do, we're not doing these videos just for you to join that. You don't have to, right? No. This is really, this is a real huge point on what we share. At this time, in this day and age, everything is happening all at once it always has been it still is there's so much information out there right now and in the field that we're in so we meet so many people that are feeling lost overwhelmed lonely alone separate they're not feeling connected to themselves you know 80 or 90 percent of people still work in jobs they hate most relationships are failing still the statistics show we've got an obese obesity pandemic sweeping across the planet We've got like young kids having no understanding of sex education whatsoever. They have no understanding of what's going on inside of them. They're just out there. Right? We, you, know, you could go into the statistics of how dire it looks on some levels. And then there's the other, of course, the other side of the spectrum, right? There's the other side where it's phenomenal, it's beautiful. We can wake up in love, we can expand ourselves, we can tap into higher states of consciousness, into trance, into beautiful states of being. But that requires clear intentions and that's why this practice is not just a, a masturbation practice it's it's bringing mindfulness the connection of the genitals with the heart it's, it's cultivating this whole beingness and then how does that show up how does that really show up how would the, how would our behaviors change how would our communica communication change and we talk a lot about consent contact and communication consent we don't even educate our children with consent. BettyMartin.com, go to her website, there's a free resource pack of pure information about consent. Phenomenal information and how we can start showing up with our clear yeses and clear noes. We can erase rape, we can erase all of these dysfunctional ways of being, right, with each other, if we go back to our sexuality, yeah, really. This is I'm super, super passionate and feel super powered up to, to, to talk about this more. If we educate our children on this, we will change the generations that come after us, really. Consent, contact, communication. Most people want contact. They don't want sex, right? They want contact. They don't need to go on a whole emotional journey of like, you know, dysfunctional and trying to be with partners they don't really want to be with. They want to be able to communicate what's going on inside of them. They can do that with these tools, with this practice. And it's not just ours, it's everyone's, guys. Let's awaken our sexual selves, let's plug ourselves in, and let's walk as complete, you know, um, what's the word, way showers, yeah? Yeah, let's be the way showers, let's be the change, and let's show our youth and others that come after us that there's a different way of connecting to our sexual selves. So go touch yourself <laughs> and make love to yourself because you're worth it and we're all worth it. And it's no longer something that we have to be afraid of, that we have to be ashamed of. It's just our fleshy, beautiful nature. Let's take a deep breath in on that. <sighs> so we just shared a lot and I'd like us to sit in silence together for a minute or so. Because one of the things that also happens with this practice is when you do it, in order to rewire the brain and, and the conditioning that we've had, silence at the end from, remember I said from doing to being, when we're in that being space, 
that's where we rewire. Mm. So if you're able to close your eyes, you can just close your eyes for a moment. If you're driving, keep them open. <laughs> but you shouldn't watch a live video while driving anyway. And just take a few breaths. Take this time for yourself. We so rarely allow ourselves during the day to just take a moment, a minute of silence. Not needing to go anywhere. Not needing to do anything. Just feeling into your own beautiful body. Maybe you feel some aliveness in your sexual center. And then with this silence, take that to the outside. Bring your aliveness, bring your beingness to the world because you deserve it and the world deserves it. Hmm. Enjoy. <laughs>